A Conrian following a god. Feels a feels a bit oxymoronic. But nonetheless, this situation holds true for the greatest NCAA recruiter east of the Mississippi, the Jester Pierre. Although to be fair, Piero Piero's always been portrayed as being the most aloof Conrian, given he greatly opposed King Ermin himself authorizing the use of forbidden knowledge. Quote, since my level of learning could not compare with the sages, I failed to earn the favor of the previous ruler. So too did I fail to stop them from tearing away the veil of sin, ushering in a tide of divine wrath, destruction, and foolishness. And despite having suffered the consequences of these divine wraths and currently plotting to go rebel against the ones who imposed the order, Piero follows a god nonetheless by way of the Cryo Archon, who at this point is all but confirmed to have at one point been the god of love. I, I say at one point because it really does seem like her ideal might have changed following the Cataclysm, or maybe not her ideal, but the way she approaches said love. And at this point, there's a litany of evidence to suggest as much. There's first and foremost Dane's chapter preview quotes. She is a god with no love left for her people nor do they have any left for her. A god with no love left for her people. Hmm, I, I wonder if we have a, a source close to her that can back this up. Ah, we do! And it's from OG himself. I will be frank. None of you have any place in my ideals, for I plan only to uphold the virtue of folly, but I can guarantee that our Sarita will once again be a god who loves all humans, and in her ideals shall all human wishes be granted. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. We, we, we need more. It's a, it's a big claim. We need more. I wonder if we have a scene from someone who might be even closer with her. A god, perhaps. And in this scene, this god comments on all the Archon's ideals, but for some reason stops at the cry of Archon and just lets out a sad sigh. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame, as does that which the Cryo Archon once Yes, these details are masterfully done. Oh my god, it's, it's, it's becoming more clear now. Do, 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 do we have perhaps a, a corroborating source from another god which might suggest the Saritza's ideal may have changed? The Seven don't always get along well, but still, I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see, a certain catastrophe happened 500 years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now if we could cap this off with yet one more line from someone who knows her that does indeed confirm she's changed herself. Her Royal Highness, the Tsaritsa, is actually a gentle soul. Too gentle, in fact. And that's why she had to harden herself. Likewise, she declared war against the whole world only because she dreams of peace. Interesting, huh? Well, you know what they say, Dane don't lie. I find it's odd, however, that whatever she's witnessed during the Cataclysm made her lose love for humanity, and that somehow, when it's all said and done, she will love humanity once more. We know the Fatui's goals are more than to just topple the Divine Thrones, as when Piero was recruiting La Signora, part of the pit Signora liked the best was, quote, we share the same goal, you, your Saritza, and I. Cleanse the sources of distortion in this world, short-sighted ignorance gods, and the darkness and corruption of the abyss. It could be that there's even more that they are seeking, but for now, this is all we have to go on. Now, the obvious answer as to why she no longer loves humanity is that she could have uncovered the truth about humanity. Their origins, humans, are not natural to the world of Tivat, an alien life form brought over to Tivat personally by the greatest being who ever lived, the Sovereign of Sovereigns, the Primordial One, a progenitor god hailing from beyond the stars. However, what's odd is that this claim should hold true for literally everything that isn't a bishop. Quote, the mountains and rivers were made and the seas and oceans accepted those who rebelled and those who would not kneel. The primordial one in one of its shades created the birds of the air, the beasts of the earth, and the fish of the sea. Together, they also created flowers, grass, and trees before finally creating humans, our ancestors. Numerous as the stars in the sky, uncountable as the sand on the shore. Does, 
Does, does she no longer like birds too? Rivers? Nigga, you know, who don't like rivers? <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm curious, at what point does something no longer become a foreign life form? Of course, this question is just <laughs> essentially me just asking a fucking zoology one, which is at what point does an invasive species become native? Or are humans invasive, or are they just non-native onto that? For instance, on Earth, we typically use the last glacial period, some like 11,000 years ago, to determine where native species belongs. If there's been movement after this fact, they're dubbed either non-native or invasive, but if a species finds itself in a new ecosystem after the last glacial period, it could still be considered naturalized if it no longer disrupts the ecosystem. To that situation is unique in that the entire fucking ecosystem was rebuilt to support humans, because that's the thing that we and Nervalettes are forgetting here. This isn't the same fucking world as it was from before when the primordial one arrived. You had this world, that's cool, that's fine. But then it came, beat the bitch out you niggas, and remade the fucking world, completely remade it for humans. And it's earned this right after putting you sorry fucks down, not once, but twice. In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. But what the fuck is this voice line? From my observations, humans have a tendency to view themselves as being in opposition with nature. And whenever this point is raised, someone is always quick to respond by declaring that humans are in fact a part of nature like any other organism. To someone like me, however, who knows an inkling of the truth, what would be most beneficial is if human civilization and the natural world of this planet could seek ways to coexist with one another. Your, your world is gone. It's, it's gone, little bro. It's not, it's not the same. Humans are as natural as anything in this world now. This is a this is a non-point. The only being who can claim some sort of legitimacy to this is a pep who's older than this new world that had been remade. Not the not the thousand-year-old Nervalette who was born into a world made for humans. Because at this point, you're the non-native species, you Fucking lizard! Just cause think about it, if a Tyrannosaurus Rex were to be reborn right now, it'd be an invasive species everywhere it's went. Cause that's the point Nervalette is missing. The only natural thing is change, and what's changed is that the bishops are no longer completely natural to this world. And that's not even to say the bishops are invasive or non-native at this point. The Light Realm still exists, bishops still exists, and bishops, most importantly, were given the option to just take a knee. It's not like Thanes came here and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill all of you. It simply said, get the fuck out the way. You had two choices, die, and simply wait a couple thousand years to be reborn, or kneel. In any case, circling back to the, <laughs> to the cryo archon, <laughs> her disposition towards humanity is odd, and that the latter half of Piero's statement suggests she will love humanity once more again in the future, but also, and perhaps more ominously, in her ideals, all human wishes will be granted. It absolutely cannot be a coincidence. They decided to drop this little piece of information at the same exact time we learned humanity's wishes led to the downfall of Rumeria. Phobos was designed to grant human desires, and it did just that, giving humanity death, destruction, and bloodshed. So now hearing another party is interested in also granting human wishes really makes you wonder about the consequences of such an action. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now to the earlier point of that statement, if what made the Saritza fall out of love with humanity was discovering they don't originally come from this world, then how will a successful rebellion against Celestia make her love them once more? Or maybe, or maybe it's just that she had to stop loving humanity to justify what people like the Doctor are doing to them. But hey, hey, what do I know? Hey, hey! Hey, what do I know, man? That's all I'm saying. Part of me wants to say that humanity will go through some sort of rebirth in this whole process. I mean, look, the Cryo Archon is taking a unique approach to challenging the Divine. While nearly all other attempts involve the use of forbidden knowledge, the Fatui are different in that they regard the Abyss as hostile. So, instead, they are doing their own thing, collecting the Gnosis for a yet-to-be-revealed purpose. It could simply be she wants a separation between Celestia and humans, and once their little rebellion is complete, and Celestia is no more, she can love humans once again, as they would no longer be bound by the divine shackles that are currently placed on them. What she's failing to realize, however, is those divine shackles 
are there for a reason. Rumeria, Sale, Conria. This is what humanity does when a god isn't present. This is why order must be maintained. Regardless, it does seem like the Fatui sure do have a loss on their place between trying to take down the reigning and defending champions in Celestia to keeping Abyssal forces at bay to eventually having to deal with the harsh reality of human desires. Is she... Is she really up for the task? You see, uh, me personally, I, I'd sit this one out for our lord above, but, uh, you know, that's just me.